My name is Emma Lead and I am an international student with Queen's University carrying out an internship with D2 Aqua. I'm currently doing a bachelor's degree in environmental management and I'm executing my professional studies year. I found the placement while looking through our job bank back home in Northern Ireland. The internship jumped at me because I've always wanted to be a part of conservation efforts and have a keen interest in marine systems. Plus, it wasn't like any other opportunity that was open to me. So, after some consideration, I jumped on a plane at the start of May and made my way to Denmark to join the Bar Reef team. Bar Reef is one of many projects launched in Denmark to try and restore lost reef systems. Rocks that would have formed natural reefs have been removed from Danish waters to help build and make way for harbours around the Danish coastline. At least 55 kilometres squared of rocky reefs have been removed. This has led to some serious implications on biodiversity as it removes some vital habitats. The aim of Bar Reef is to restore part of the area of the east coast of Samsu. It looks to create a 100 metre long reef built with rocks from a Norwegian quarry with the hopes of increasing the biodiversity of the surrounding waters while also providing the potential element of coastal protection. The reef can provide a method of coastal protection that will work in tandem with boosting biodiversity. If it is successful in providing protection, it will do so by breaking up wave action and decreasing erosion levels along the coastline, providing protection for the properties. Reef restoration is a useful tool for inner Danish waters, making it ideal for Samsu. Five days after arriving in Denmark and only two days after meeting my team and prepping equipment, we set off for the beautiful island of Samsu to begin the six week long baseline study. Our team consisted of Tim, the project head from the Netherlands, Margot, who was a master's thesis student from Switzerland, Titus, a bachelor's project student from Lithuania, Patricia, a master's thesis student from India, and then myself on my professional studies year from Queen's. Upon arrival, the first two days were spent setting up rigs and familiarising ourselves with the equipment and each other. A rig consists of a concrete tile with a metal neck and pole. Attached to the tile is a sinking line that has visibility markers at 1 and 3 metres. The sinking line is attached to an anchor to keep it stable, and then a surface line runs from the anchor up to a buoy flag on the surface used to help locate the rigs. There is a GoPro attached to the metal poles at a consistent height of 20 centimetres. When everything was ready, we set sail to drop our first deployment. To achieve a successful deployment, you'll need two people working with the rig. There is person one who deals with the heavy lifting and the wet stuff, and then person two who handles the dry things like the camera and the information sheets. For deployment, person one will check that the mount is still okay, will deploy the boat's anchor, and then attach the deployment rope to the rig. Person two, in the meantime, will insert the new SD card and battery, will scan the preset QR code, which will start the recording program. The camera is then put into the house, and gets handed to person 1 again, who will attach it to the rig. Person 2 then fills in the information sheet with all of the data. To deploy the rig, it is lowered by person 1, and then person 2 feeds the following ropes, anchor and flag while the boat reverses. And then that's it, a successful deployment. On Samsu we had three sites, a northern and southern control site, each with three rigs, and then a reef site with six rigs. Each rig was retrieved and redeployed each day depending on the weather. The footage was then taken back to the summer house to be taken off the SD cards and placed on hard drives. All of the info that was gathered to match the deployment was also logged in an Excel sheet and this was an important part of every evening. With five of us on the island it was easy to settle into a routine. If you were on the boat, you got ready in the morning and packed the cases and then set off on the drive to the harbour. The next few hours were then spent lifting and redeploying rigs. If you stayed at home for the day, you helped prep the gear in the morning and then settled into whatever task you had lined out for the day. My day usually consisted of video analysis training, reading reports and attending any meetings. Then in the evening, the two that had remained at home would normally cook dinner for everyone and it was a really nice system that we had set in place and everything always felt equal in terms of workload. We managed to complete the baseline study and retrieved a total of 5,003 successful sequences which will be analysed to get results for the study. A successful sequence is regarded as a 2 minute long clip that falls within the set out, obstruction or visibility guidelines. 
For us, this meant that there could be no more than 10% obstruction in any of the clips. If it happened that there was more than 10% obstruction, or there was an issue with the rig, these clips were still kept but were just placed in a folder named Not For Analysis. We spent a total of five weeks on the island working pretty much non-stop. It was tough work but enjoyable and the people I worked with made it such a rewarding experience. Plus, we had amazing weather the whole time. We often took time to ourselves in the evening to play games or watch movies together and I often took myself off for an evening swim or walk. When you were on the island it was important that you made sure you had a good work-life balance so that everything stayed enjoyable and I have so many highlights from my time on the island. Baseline studies are important stages in projects. This type of study will employ the back E method, otherwise known as before, after, control and impact. The baseline will show the before data on the control and impact sites. We use the results from these studies to compare with monitoring that will occur once the change has been implemented. In our case, it will be once the reef has been deployed and given time to develop. We will then return and complete the exact same testing in the same time of year and sites. This way, the only variable should be the change of the benthic type or the bottom type, which will now be reef instead of sand. With the new after data and the original before data from the baseline, we will be able to determine the effect the reef deployment will have had on the local biodiversity and fish populations in the area. Coastal conservation and protection is an important topic worldwide and our project on Samsu was no different. It managed to gain both national and international interest. We were visited by the Danish TV service DR and the British TV service BBC. They took an interest in what we were doing and both of them wanted to join us on the boat to film us working and talking about the importance of the work we were doing. This was an incredible experience for me to be a part of, particularly to promote conservation and the work I was getting to be a part of with DTU, as the BBC is my local news channel in Northern Ireland. Projects like this are possible thanks to funding from investors. For Bar Reef we can thank Velux Foundation and Vattenfall. Investors are so important to the project as without their contributions, many projects like Bar Reef could not happen. Bar Reef has been an incredible experience I will never forget, both for the knowledge I gained and the good memories from my time working with my team. I especially thank Tim, Margot, Titus and Patricia for helping me through the project and the knowledge I got from them. I also want to thank Yon for introducing me to the team and the project in the first place and then all the guidance he has provided throughout my time at DTU while working on the project and also helping me with making this film. I then also want to thank Nick Novak from Enema Robotics, Margot, Titas and Patricia for enabling me to use some of the various video footage they collected during our time on the island. DTU also worked with many collaborators on Bar Reef. Part of the project was also Lars Callon from the National Association of Municipalities, Eric D. Christensen at DTU Construct, Bo M. Cruz at Harbour Nature, Peter Frigard at Ulbar University and Lars Skogard with Samsung Kommune.